our UAP communicating with us. Hey, welcome back. 2023 has already started very interestingly. SCU, the Scientific Coalition for UAP Studies, have announced that two incidents communicated or sent a message to their observer. It means that some of them aren't just natural phenomenon, plasma effects, flocks of seagulls, but they are under intelligent control. Today, let me tell you about these two communication incidents. The first with the US Air Force and the second with the Navy. We know how the message was sent. We know what the message said. And most interestingly, we know how it was received. But these UAP communications had a strange twist. They could only be received or interpreted by the people seeing the UAP at the time. The UAP did not broadcast a hello, I am here message. It sent a very specific message to the Air Force and to the Navy that they would understand. Today, let's look at both the incidents to understand how the message was transmitted, how it was received and what the message said. And at the end of the film, I'll come back to assess what this could mean and to ask you, the viewers, what you think is really going on. On the 17th of July 1957, a US Air Force RB-47 departed Topeka, Kansas. This is an ELINT aircraft, electronic surveillance, with three flight crew, pilot, an engineer, and a navigator. But sitting inside the fuselage with no windows are six US Air Force specialists. ELINT aircraft are packed with the latest listening technology. Most of the time, they are passive, listening out for all incoming radio frequencies. Their main role was to fly over the Soviet Union and gather radar and communication information. Today's mission was very special. This is a new aircraft being tested for a new mission in Cold War Europe. It was manned by a top crew. The cockpit crew were all US Air Force instructors and the so-called hogs in the back were top electronic warfare officers. The aircraft flew a test pattern over the Gulf of Mexico using the Biloxi radar as a reference. Suddenly, a blip appeared on one of the instruments. The cockpit crew confirmed visual contact. A white light surrounded by a blue glow. The UAP shadowed the aircraft for over 700 miles. The pilot, Commander Lewis D. Chase, altered their mission to track and record the UAP. During this intercept, the electronic warfare officer kept receiving a strange message from the UAP. It apparently was transmitting the exact friend or foe secret code only known to the US Air Force. The friend or foe system helps radar operators identify enemy aircraft. This is how it works. The radar sets with which you are already familiar will detect and locate aircraft but will not in themselves tell whether this aircraft is friend or enemy. Equipment has been developed, therefore, to enable a friendly plane to identify itself, and so avoid being shot down. This equipment is known as IFF. The IFF pulses reinforce the normal radar echo, since they are actually transmitted from the plane, not merely reflected by it. If this reinforced signal does not appear, then the plane is an enemy craft. Note that the IFF reply pulses, which appear below the target echo every two and a half seconds, do not all have the same width. Some are much wider than others. 
By a suitable combination of these wide and narrow pulses, a coded reply message is automatically sent by the friendly aircraft. Four successive reply pulses make up the complete message. In this case, two narrow pulses, followed by two wide pulses. And it takes ten seconds for these four pulses to be seen. Eventually, the intercept was called off when the RB-47 was running low on fuel and returned to its base. After debriefing, the true strangeness of this event was revealed. The UAP apparently knew the secret friend or foe code and was transmitting it to the Elint aircraft. One interpretation of this strange event is the UAP intentionally made contact. But it didn't broadcast its signal to the world. It sent a narrow cast message that could only be picked up and understood by the US Air Force. Today, investigators have reopened this case and think the UAP's message was sent intentionally. Almost 50 years later, it happened again, when F-18s intercepted the Tic Tac object off the coast of San Diego. The Navy pilot's mission was to identify the intruder in their military operation area. Any aircraft that strays into an MOA and is not in touch with the controlling authority needs to be intercepted and the live fire exercises have to stop. And this is what they found. On multiple sensors, a strange tic-tac shaped object was clearly seen. But what the tic-tac did next changes history. Only after it was positively identified on multiple sensors, it jumped to the CAP point. How the heck did it know what your cap point is? That's a good question. That's you, you the one if you don't, no one, you know, you don't, we don't tell it, we don't broadcast it, we have a waypoint in the system. But I don't know, maybe it knew where we were going, because we use the same one day after day after day. Right, it's just um, it. But it, it obviously knew. But you we never saw it there. Never saw it there. For Chad, sure. when he took off, when he got the video, we landed, we told them, hey, look, we just, we just chased this thing. But how did the Tic Tac know the location of the CAP point, and was its positive choice to relocate there a message? A CAP point is a muster or hold point that only the US Navy know about. Aircraft return there after a mission and hold before returning one by one to their aircraft carriers. UAP investigators now think in both these cases we were being communicated with. The UAPs were sending a message. That was really fascinating stuff. What do you think it really means? Well, to kick things off, here's my view. Some UAP seems to be under intelligent control. The UAP knew who the observer was. More than that, the UAP knew everything about that observer and knew how to communicate with only that person. And the messages sent clearly say, hello, we're here and we know everything about you. Could these two incidents be evidence of first contact. The possibilities are mind-blowing. Could they be us from the future who've come back in time to create their future? What I've just told you is a game changer. UAPs can communicate. That means the truth is out there. I'm planning to work more closely with SCU in this amazing year of 2023 
where the truth will emerge. So why don't you subscribe now and stay tuned to this channel for interesting revelations.